Mr. Childers, would you introduce yes, yourself? Tell us your name and DOC number, please. My name is Gary Childers, 105801. And Council, would you introduce yourself, please? Good morning, Ms. Renata. Jane Hogan here on behalf of Gary Childress, and I will make a statement at the end with the committee's approval. Thank you. Uh, so Mr. Childress, you're here uh, this morning seeking a commutation of your sentence. Uh, you were sentenced in March of 1984 in Vermilion Parish for a conviction of second degree murder, and you received a life sentence. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Let me uh, acknowledge the folks who've joined us today. We have the Parole Project here, Carrie Myers, so we'll be speaking on We also have, uh, representing the victim, uh, Ms. Lori Abair and Mr. Anthony Leterio, both of whom will be speaking. Uh, also present is Will Cayulet, uh and Melissa Soli. Also here observing um, is Mr. Mike Hardy, police chief, and then we have who will be speaking in opposition from the DA's office, Mr. Calvin Woodrum. And uh, after we conduct our interview with you, Mr. Childers, we'll call on those folks who want to speak. At the end, you'll be allowed to make a statement, and then we'll turn it over to Ms. Hogan to close it out for us. Okay? <clears throat> All right, Mr. Childers, your case this morning has been assigned to, uh, to Mr. Rocha. Did you answer any questions you may have? Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning, Mr. Childress. Good morning, sir. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, Madam Chairman, fellow board members, before us this morning, we have Gary Wayne Childress, EOC number 105-801. Mr. Childress is here this morning seeking a recommendation by commutation of sentence for a 1984 second degree murder conviction in the death of Mr. Francis Terrio in Vermilion Parish. Today's hearing is Mr. Childress's second attempt at attempting to obtain clemency. His first clemency endeavor was in 2017 when the panel voted two votes to grant and three votes to deny his request for clemency. The reasons for denying stated that he needed additional programs, victim opposition, and law enforcement opposition. <clears throat> At the time of that hearing, he had served 34 years of incarceration. The offense occurred on July 5th, 1983, and the applicant was arrested some 21 days later after a thorough investigation was completed. Mr. Childers, tell the panel exactly what happened that day back in July, 1983. There are two different versions of those events in our PPI. The first version was about your friend, Michael Miller, and the victim was supplying drugs to Michael, and you said he was making your friend, Michael Miller, a junkie. And that was given at the time of your arrest. But, he gave another statement to a parole officer about a year ago and mentioned the reason why he shot the victim was that he had stolen a gun from your father. Now, both versions say that he got the victim and you uh, take full responsibility for that. But Tell us exactly the reasons why you confronted the victim, Mr. Francis Terrio, and murdered him. Okay. On July the 7th, 1983, I was sitting at the house and I noticed a gun was missing in the house. I was staying with my father at the time. 
uh, I wanted to get the gun back. And so the only there was only two people who could have took the gun. And that was Michael Miller or Francis. So Mike told me that Francis had took the gun. So I went to go confront Francis to try to get the gun back. I wanted to get it back without anybody knowing, you know, so it wouldn't be no trouble. I didn't want my father to find out, you know. So we ended up talking to Francis. Everything, you know, escalated into an argument, and I shot and killed him. So why would the police come to your door to arrest you and you admit it and you told the police you knew exactly why they were there? I told excuse me. I'm, I'm and, sorry. And he said I killed Buckwheat and he was messing with me and you mentioned that you were tired of him selling drugs to Michael Miller and making him a junkie. Did you say that at the time of your arrest? Yes, sir, I probably did say that. But the truth of the matter is, what really happened is what I just told you. Okay. Michael Miller, Michael Miller was probably already a junkie. I don't know. At the time, you know, I said things, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to get away with this and all this here. <clears throat> I was young. I was stupid. It was just done. I appreciate I appreciate the correct version because I was a little confused because there were two different versions at two different times. So let's continue. Yes, sir. Mr. Childress was found guilty by a jury of his peers as charged with second degree murder on uh, on March 16, 1984, and was sentenced to life and hard labor at DOC without benefit of probation, parole, or suspension and sentence. Mr. Childress has been incarcerated for the last 40 and a half years. He is currently 60 years old, and at the time of the offense, he was 20 years of age. Matter of fact, it was the day after his birthday when he made 20 years old. First of all, I would like to address the major concerns of the three board members that voted to deny your clemency in your 2017 hearing. And they gave reasons as a lack of programs. <laughs> And I want to address that first. Since your 2017 hearing, you've completed 100 hours pre-release, living in balance, one and two, thinking for a change, victim awareness, victim accountability letter. You've also received 180 hours of credit in agriculture equipment operation. You have multiple in-service awards from prison enterprises, along with a letter of accommodation from prison enterprises for your service during the COVID-19. Uh, Mr. Childress was one of the few persons elected at Louisiana State Penitentiary to live in the facility to keep prison enterprises going through the COVID-19. Only very few selected offenders were chosen for this particular job. Uh, he's also on the CPR team. He received his GED in 1991. Is there any other programs or accomplishments since your 2017 hearing that I haven't mentioned. I believe you pretty much said them all, sir. Uh, that's... Now, another thing of note that I like to mention at this time, 
Mr. Childers has been a Class A trustee since 1995, all except for a six month period in 1997 when he received a contraband write up, but he regained his Class A status the same year and has never lost it <laughs> in the last 26 years. Another accomplishment I think is very rare. Mr. Childress has had the same job for the last 30 years, which is a very rare occurrence at the Louisiana State Penitentiary. Uh, what one do we have today? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. One Falco, could you speak to his employment? Mr. Roche, as usual, you, you're very thorough. You, you, you don't give me anything else really to say about uh, Gary. He, like you said, I mean, to, to be in the position that he's been with uh, Prison Enterprise for the last 30 years in that trusted position, driving tractors for him, um, doing anything else that they needed him to do throughout this time, uh, he, he's been an asset to, to prison enterprise. Thank you, Warden. One second. Uh, one second, okay. Uh, opposition in this case, the judge in this case had no comment. The district attorney's office maintains its opposition from 2017. The uh, sheriff's office in Vermillion Parish had no comment, and the Abbeville chief of police maintains his opposition from 2017. Um, there's multiple letters from six of the brothers and sisters of the victim who were adamantly opposed to any clemency and members of the family will give their opposition statements later in this hearing. Uh, the offender's family is in support of clemency. He has all positive remarks from the staff at Louisiana State Penitentiary. And he also has a letter of accommodation and recommendation from prison enterprises Form manager, Mr. Daniel Hoover. He has a low risk assessment. He has a low needs assessment. He has a very good institutional record. He's uh, had only one class B write up since 1997. That was in 2006, a contraband write up. And he only received a discipline of loss of one week of canteen. So evidently this infection was not a serious infection. But he has no write-ups since 2006, which is approximately 17 years ago. Uh, this instant offense is the only arrest and conviction on the offender's adult record and there's no indication that he has a juvenile record. Let's talk about drugs and alcohol, Mr. Childers. Did drugs or alcohol play any part in this offense? No, sir. Uh, I smoked a little weed, you know, uh, drink socially. I wasn't no big drinker, but I did smoke weed. Anything stronger? I wasn't, no, nothing stronger. When was the last time you uh, used marijuana? 97. I drunk the urine test in 1997. Yeah. And when I did, they sent me big stripe. So while I was there, I seen, you know, how things, how I had things when I was a trustee and how I had things when I was big stripe. And so, when I got my trustee status back, I never smoked again because 
I'm scared I lose trustee status. I never even think about it. So, so that one right up sets you straight. Yes, sir. Uh, if you after you've been big stride for a while, and then you get trustee. It's just, it's just so much more freedom. You got you got a lot more privileges and everything. Then I didn't want to lose it again. Uh, let's talk about your transition plan. Your transition plan is in Jackson, Missouri, with your family. You're yes. gonna be living with your mother, Mrs. Young, and you've been working with your brother on his farm. So tell us about your transition plan. Well, uh, my niece, my brother, they both farm. My niece doesn't got a little contracting job. I'd probably be working with her. I'd like to help my brother with his farm and, you know, on his time, on my time off and stuff, you know, and kind of show him some of the things I've learned here, you know, to help him. Because uh, he's just a small farmer. They they farm pretty big here, so I've learned a lot. And uh, and what proximity does your mother live to the place where you'll be working? My mother, she's right there, uh, probably... 15 minutes away by car. She uh she lives in a assistant elderly assistant housing. So I wouldn't be able to stay with her, but I'd be able to check on her, you know, spend time with her, help her out. My 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 paperwork indicate that you'd be living with your mother. Where will you be living? Uh my last uh, residential plan, I think I feel I'll be staying with my niece. Okay, okay, okay. And that's in Jackson, Missouri? Yes, sir. Uh, one Falco, is there any other thing that you would like to mention? Not at this time, Mr. Roche. Like I said, uh, after that incident in 97, we, we've not had any issues at all with him. He's taking programs. Um, he, he's, he's been doing really well for us here. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairman, I do have a recommendation in this case, and I will deliver it at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Roche. I don't see any other questions, so we'd like to hear now from the Parole Project. Mr. Myers. Um, good morning, Kerry Myers with Louisiana Parole Project. Um, at Mr. Childress' last hearing, the board asked him to do some specific things. Um, since that time, he's completed uh, victim awareness, his victim accountability letter, thinking for a change, living in balance. He's certified in CPR. Uh, even before then, in, way back in 1991, he earned his GED. It took him six years while working and going to school half a day, working half a day, but he persevered and did that. Um, the parole project is here uh, to help him through his transition. Uh, after 40 years of incarceration, he's going to need the services, the consumer skills, the social skills, uh, the financial skills, and the peer mentorship that we provide. Uh, while he's with us, he will be working on his interstate compact. Um, however, the, uh, the, the time with us will be very important to that transition. Uh, he also has employment where he's, he's highly skilled, not only does he drive a tractor? He can repair a tractor. So the, the skills that he has uh, for farm uh, management, farm work, uh, are, are all there. Uh, something, something he gained uh, during his incarceration. So this is an absolute case of the system working um, and, and getting the best benefit out of, the, out of what the system has done in Mr. Childress' case. So we just asked this board to consider the years he served his overall record and grant his recommendation today. All right, thank you, sir. We'll hear from the opposition now. Could we first hear from Ms. Lori Abair? Okay, hi, I'm Lori Abair. I'm Brent Estereo's sister. I apologize for not being able to, y'all being able to see Francis's family. And I am really opposed to Mr. Childers getting out of jail. 
He was sentenced to a life sentence, natural life, without the benefit of probation or parole, which I think he needs to serve because he premeditatedly murdered my brother. Yeah. He sat there and thought about luring my brother to a parking lot, bringing him to another place, and then shot him and had no remorse because the night of the murder, he sat in the Abbeville Police Department <coughs> building with us, Francis's family, and made the comment, oh, wait until I find out who did this to Buckwheat. They're going to pay for it. That is very deceitful in my opinion because he did it and he sat there and with my family and acted like he knew nothing of it. He took our brother from us. He took my father and his mother's son. They buried their son before they passed away, which due to Gary doing this, he was not there for our parents' funerals. He was not there for the birth of all the nieces and nephews that know him through pictures. And when we go visit his grave site, because that's all we get to see, we don't get to talk to him. We don't get to hold him. We don't get to hug him. We see a cold grave. This man has stolen so much from our family because we are a close-knit family. And Francis didn't get to enjoy all that with us. And I don't think it's right that Gary Childers gets to enjoy his family when he cold-bloodedly took my brother from us. Francis never got to see his grandson born. Francis would be expecting a great-granddaughter in February. He doesn't get to see all that. He doesn't get to participate in all that. Um, you can say what you want, Mr. Childers. I do not believe that you are a changed person. I have read and heard all the comments that were made during the trials you had. And you took a person's life. You are not God to take that person's life like you did. And I honestly do not believe you show any remorse for what you did. You didn't do it then, and it doesn't look like you're doing it now. People can change, but I'm sorry. I don't believe you can. Thank you, Ms. Avery. We appreciate your remarks. Thank you so much. On behalf of the family, we have uh, Mr. Terrio's brother, Anthony Terrio. Yes. Go ahead. Like would you like to speak? Mr. Childress, do you remember when you came? Mr. Terrio, you Mr. Terrio, you need to address your remarks to the board, not to Mr. Childers. Okay. Uh, do you remember when you? Mr. Terry, no, no. Can you, can you direct your remarks to the board? Gary Childers picked you up. Mr. Childers. Mm -mm. no. Ma'am, what he's trying to say. Gary Childers, the afternoon of our brother's death. Gary Childers is the one that went and picked up Anthony Terrio the younger brother of Francis and said they couldn't find Francis and that <laughs> they didn't know where he was. So they're going to go ride around and Gary Childers and Michael Miller picked up my brother, Francis's brother, Anthony at work, drove him to where our brother lay in the field dead by gunshot wounds and like acted like he did not know that our brother was laying there dead. Thank you, ma'am, for clarifying that for us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, we have the DA's office, Mr. Woodruff. Can we hear from your office, sir? Good It's important to recognize the fact that Mr. Childress is still not being truthful uh, nor accepting of his actions. 
According to the eyewitness, uh, Michael Miller, uh, this all started over a suspicion of a missing firearm. Michael Miller did not tell uh, Mr. Childers that Mr. Terrio had taken it. Mr. Terrio, in fact, told Mr. Miller that he suspected Mr. Terrio of being the thief of the firearm. And, and uh, Ms. Hebert is right. He lured Mr. Terrio out into a place under false pretenses. And once there, uh, confronted him about the gun. According to Mr. Miller, Mr. Terrio uh, showed surprise. He didn't know what he was talking about. And then when uh, the defendant pulled out a firearm, Mr. Miller began to run. But before that, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Childress shot Mr. Terrio in the leg and took him to the ground. Uh, Mr. Terrio was lying on the ground, crying, screaming for help. Mr. Miller began to run. And then Mr. Terrio shot uh, Mr. Childers shot Mr. Terrio numerous additional times, executed him out in that lonely field over a suspicion of a stolen firearm. Uh, he is not being truthful with you today. Uh, he still says this was an argument that escalated into shooting. Uh, Mr. Terrio did not have a firearm. This was a premeditated, planned execution. And uh, all of these programs, uh, Mr. Roche, I appreciate you very much. All of these programs that, uh, that Mr. Childers has done, he has done for himself, all right, to try to earn his freedom. This is what this board told him he needed to work on uh, the last time, six years ago. And he, 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 he was smart enough to do what you laid out there for him. But it's all about him. It's all about gaining his release. Today, as we sit here, he still will not own up to this terrible crime. The state is opposed to his release. I just don't think he's ready. Thank you. Yes, sir. And thank you. We appreciate your, your input. All right. Uh, Mr. Childers, is there, before we turn it over to Ms. Hogan, is there a statement you'd like to make to the board? Yes. I'm going to apologize to the Francis Terrell family. Uh, for all the pain and suffering I've caused, I'm truly sorry. Uh, it was a selfish act I did. I know I can't never make it right, but I'm sorry, I truly am. I mm -hmm. uh, also want to thank you know the board for giving me this hearing. But, uh, thank you. Ms. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Natsa. Um, Mr. Roche did a very thorough presentation of all of Mr. Childers' um, accomplishments since he's been in prison. And I, I would just like to highlight that there is, there is no amount of programming or compliance with, with, it, with any job or any kind of skill that Mr. Childers could learn while in prison to undo the harm that he has caused. Um, he admits the harm that he caused. He, had, he admitted it when he was apprehended and he, had, he takes accountability for what he did. Um, as Mr. Roche noted, he was one day um, into his 20th year of life when he made this uh, horrible decision. And he has grown and matured substantially throughout the past 40 years into a responsible human being who is changed and who is compassionate. And his programming, the three decades that he has spent working seven days a week uh, frequently for prison enterprises, not just as Mr. Myers pointed out, not just um, in crop production, but in maintaining the, the equipment used for crop production and, and spraying and all of that. Mr. Childress uh, helps to keep the prison running. And especially during the COVID pandemic was one of the few people trusted to be on the stick out crew to keep the prison running. And Mr. Childress would continue to selfless, selfless, selflessly um, be a instrumental part of any community that he's a part of. He does have family support that we're supposed to be on Zoom today. I'm not sure whether there was a technological issue, but his niece, brother and mother are in Missouri. And so his his transition plan would be to first go to the parole project and then to go out of state. So he would not be he would not be here locally in Louisiana if granted um, commutation. So given all of that, given the substantial amount of time that Mr. Childress has served, his status as a first felony offender, 
his low risk of recidivism, his low LARNA score. Um, he's a negative two at uh, LARNA. It, I know that we don't use LARNA anymore, but he is an extremely low risk of recidivism. And we would add, and after his 2017 hearing, he did not get discouraged. He continued to work hard, work as a trustee, take classes to better himself. For all of these reasons, we would ask the board to uh, recommend a commutation to a term of years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think the board is prepared to vote. Mr. Roche will be voting first. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Mr. Childress. Yes, sir. <laughs> based on positive remarks from Wharton Calhoun, an excellent disciplinary conduct record for the last 26 years, excellent work performance over the last 30 years, a good transition plan, and a length of incarceration. You have been incarcerated for 40 and a half years. My recommendation is to recommend to the governor to commute your sentence to 65 years with immediate parole eligibility. Thank you, Mr. Roche. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Roche, you made an excellent presentation, very thorough as normal. Uh, my vote, likewise, is the same for the same reasons. Mr. Freeman. Uh, I agree with my colleagues, and my vote is the same. Mrs. Jackson. Thank you. Um, for the same reasons, uh, Mr. Chilby was only 20 when he was heard. Uh, he was the first offender, and over the course of the last 40 years, he has served his time well. I'd like to thank Ms. Terrio's family for participating. And I know that in your minds, uh, Mr. Childers will forever be the person who, at 20 years old, uh, impacted your life. However, our job today is to look at who he is today and the rehabilitation that he has, in fact, demonstrated. And so, for those reasons, my vote today is the same. Thank you, Mrs. Jackson. And Mr. Childers, I saw you in 2017. Right. And uh, I, I concur with my colleagues today. My vote is the same favorably to commute your sentence to 65 years. You didn't get discouraged after being denied in 2017. You continued to work hard. Uh, I base my vote on uh, your age, the amount of time you've been incarcerated. Uh, and you were young, young, very young, and I think that you have demonstrated great maturity over the last 40 years, so I wish you well. Good luck. On your behalf, sir, we're going to make the recommendation that your sentence be commuted to 65 years. Thank you. Thank you. 